Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Uh, for some reason, a common video request we've gotten recently is to do a quote-unquote main deck tour. So we're just going to start here at the very bow and walk all the way to the stern down the starboard side of the ship and we'll point out some features and talk about a few things along the way. Uh, otherwise, this is going to be a little bit shaky cam as, as we walk from point to point, uh, but you guys requested this for some reason. So, first off, we are up here at the extreme bow of the ship on Iowa and Wisconsin. This is a raised platform where the 20 millimeters used to be. On Missouri and New Jersey, this platform was deleted and this uh, windscreen was installed in its place. No idea why the Atlantic Fleet boats got one and the Pacific Fleet boats got another. This happened around 1951 or 1952, uh, and for some reason it just ended up that way. So our first feature here is the ship's jack staff. That flies the naval jack when we're in port to show we're a military vessel. It is all hinged, so when we are at sea, it can fold down, and there's actually a slot for it and these uh, bracings right here on the uh, port side of the bow. Lock them down out of the way. So see these two chains coming out of the middle, these are from our 100-year storm mooring plan. We are tied up to the pier and to bollards using uh, regular rope, but we also have chains bow and stern like this to hold us in place here on the river to keep us uh, in place if something happens and those mooring lines part. Continuing back, we've got this capstan here on the starboard side. This and another one like it just a little bit further aft are the only remnants of our mine-sweeping paravane equipment. This was uh, part of a concept to use battleships as minesweepers during World War II. We would have carried paravanes. Um, they would have tied to a they call it chin mounted. It's a little hook at the very bottom of the bow of the ship on New Jersey. It was cut off in the 80s. On the other three Iowas, it was retained, thinking that they might have to sweep mines in the Persian Gulf. However, the capstans on the main deck were retained, and uh, their motors were sometimes run to use them with some of the equipment they were moving around the deck. They're significantly smaller than the capstans and wildcats back here for the mooring line. Continuing back there, we've got the anchor chains. And where the, the two holes are for the anchors coming out, that's the bull nose. We're probably going to do a separate video here in the near future where we talk about all the farm animals up here at the bow of the ship. But uh, the, these two anchor chains on the sides are our original anchors and chains. The two in the middle are the uh, thousand year or hundred year storm mooring system as it's been called. Here is the other capstan associated with our paravane. Coming up here you can see that we've got our Discone cage antenna which was a Vietnam addition on this ship. The other Iowa's had it added in the uh, 1980s. And you'll see on the forward face of us, we have one of our ship's bells. Some of the Iowas have it mounted on the aft face, some of them on the forward face. Don't ask me why. Many of the spaces up here for more watertight integrity are only accessed by vertical ladders and hatches like this, at least as built. In mothballs, the Navy cut through all those watertight bulkheads to run dehumidification equipment while keeping this level sealed up. Uh, but when in service, the only way to access most of those uh, spaces, such as the sand locker, uh, the bosun's lockers, and, and other things like that, the paint locker, was through hatches like these on the deck. Each hatch has an associated pipe stand like this where you could install a J davit over it so that you could crane stuff from down below up to here. You'll notice there are also some fire plugs up here. Anywhere on the ship there's a fire, you've got to be able to fight it. In the 80s, they were also able to use those fire plugs as part of a washdown system for nuclear, biological, or chemical warfare. Uh, there's some great pictures of Wisconsin with her fire hoses rigged to the fire plugs and basically tied at various places as a, uh, 
uh, real DIY uh, washdown system, whereas more modern ships will have that plumbing already installed. There's some great pictures of uh, aircraft carriers with their whole flight decks awash. They look like a golf course with all the sprinklers going. Continuing aft, we've got our Wildcats and Capstans. One's for raising the anchor chains if we're moored in, a, uh, in deep water. One's for the mooring lines if we're tied off to the pier like we are nowadays. The controls for these also make an appearance nearby, and they're all going down to equipment one deck below us in the windlass room that you can see on the tour route. In the 80s, Iowa-class battleships had positions for eight 50 caliber machine guns, four on each side of the main deck. Uh, it seems like they probably only carried four of these mounts, and they would be brought out and installed wherever needed. These provide good protection against small boats. On the deck below us here, is one of the ship's original 40 millimeter gun tubs. Most of the Iowas had these cut off at deck level and then teaked over flush. We're the only one that has it cut off at the level of the wood, allowing you to see where these bow mounted 40 millimeter guns used to be. Pipes painted brown like this carry sanitary uh, fluids. So for pumping our uh, sewage handling tanks overboard, we've got one of these on each side forward and one of these on each side aft. Nowadays, we pump everything from forward to aft and overboard from aft, uh, so we do not use the forward ones. You'll also notice the ship's breakwater here. The Iowa-class battleships have a very steep rise to the bow and very little buoyancy up here, which means the bow tends to dive real deep in heavy waves. All the water would then run aft uh, this way. So the breakwater is to push that off into the scuppers instead of leaving it right here. Uh, if it keeps coming straight down, you're hitting the gun turrets, of which the forward face has these big holes in it for the barrel, and uh, where the crew are gonna be working. We also have a number of uh, these mushroom air vents around the ship. These are steam-powered fans that are doing force draft ventilation and sucking exterior air down into the berthing spaces below us. The ship's original 1980s era quarterdeck display boards were found on board. And so we uh, continue to maintain and display these on the quarterdeck when visitors come on board today. So this one is an original and has the uh, names of the final officers assigned on board so that you can tell if they are on board or ashore for liberty. Right now we've got everybody moved to ashore. Some of these features up here have been added by the museum, such as the uh, flag display. Others, like these shells, are the original uh, quarterdeck display items. Continuing on, our vents come in two basic types. The mushroom vents, which flare out at the top, which are sucking air in, and the stool-type vents, which are sucking air from inside the ship out as part of the ventilation system. This is the quarterdeck shack. Normally it would not have this awning. This was something the museum added, but the original quarterdeck uh, area is back there and we continue to use it today. Overhead here in the 01 level, you can see the life raft bags. There would have been over 80 of these 
uh, 25 man life rafts, inflatable, stored on racks like this, mostly on the 01 level, though uh, a little bit higher on the superstructure for some. They're mounted on the outside of what had been another 40 millimeter gun tub. Some of the Iowas still have this entire uh, gun tub projecting out. Uh, some of them, like Wisconsin, have had it cut off. Hold on. Heading aft, we've got one of the original 20 millimeter gun tubs overhead. This one was retained on all the Iowas. This one was retained on all the Iowas because uh, it's where they mounted the saluting guns later on in the ship's careers. And at the extreme end of the ship's career, some of the Iowas even got a 25 millimeter Mark 38 chain gun mounted up there for uh, small suicide boats in the Persian Gulf. One of the main differences between Iowa-class battleships and the preceding two classes of fast battleships are the upper handling rooms standing out from the superstructure on their own. So as we go down the deck, you'll see this one and then a second upper handling room just where it uh, projects out. On the South Dakotas and North Carolinas, they're built more into the superstructure. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure why they wasted the lost interior volume by not plating over from here to the other superstructure and having another office space inside in here uh, like the other ships. But it does make for, in most places, the deck more room. And uh, if something here detonates, it does cause you, uh, it, it does keep it separate, separate from the rest of the superstructure. As we head back aft, we come back to where the, uh, sh some of the ship's boats are mounted. This space always had ship's boats, usually 26-foot surf boats, like the one up above. And this was the boat that uh, could be ready manned and put into the water in an emergency if needed. In the 80s, when they added the, the new boat booms and the double-stacked uh, boats here, they also added this breakwater because even with the forward breakwater, water coming down the decks here uh, would continue to run and really damage this area. So uh, the breakwater was added. The different Iowas got different ones based on which shipyard they were refit in. I prefer the Long Beach style perfect, uh, personally with this curve. The Pascagoula one is more flat. Iowa-class battleships would carry about six boats in the 80s, two uh, Liberty boats, two officers' boats, usually a captain and an admiral's, and then two 26-foot uh, motor surf boats. Here we have the other upper handling room for five-inch guns sticking out on the deck. And then aft of it, we've got the shore power connection. There's another identical one on the opposite side, depending on which way you're tied up to the pier. Continuing further aft, you can see the refueling boom added in the 80s and the winch for it. This was for refueling other vessels from this ship. The shed here, the teak shop, is a temporary addition that the museum made so that we've got a carpentry shop while we're redecking the ship. As soon as this five year, $5 million project is over, this shed goes away. But here, as we get back to the fantail, you can see a lot of the redecked area. The ship has two gangways, and typically always would when she was tied up to the pier. The after gangway was for the enlisted sailors. The forward gangway was for the officers. Nowadays, we use it so that guests come on forward and exit aft.
continuing towards the fantail. Spaces back here were set aside for parking either the ship's boats or helicopters that may have been embarked. The idea was we could have a helicopter on the landing pad and then uh, up to two other helicopters and even two boats back here and they could all fit on one side of the ship so the turret could turn and fire on the other side and if it had to fire on this side you could move that stuff using a mule, one of the yellow uh, pieces of deck gear that's motorized, to tow it all to the other side. Or, you got 1,600 sailors on board, you can have one of them towed around. Continuing aft, we have the tents, which cover the uh, helicopter pads. When the ship was in service, this could have been covered with an awning, so basically all we've done that's new and different is added sides to enclose it in inclement weather. The sides here are more for parking areas, so we can have a larger deck park, and then the actual flight deck is back here. So here is the helicopter landing pad with your, all your lines painted for them to line up on as they come back and land. <laughs> so coming back here, on the extreme fantail, we've got some of the largest cargo loading hatches on the ship. Uh, back here in all the dead space, they did use for some cargo area. And we have the former 40 millimeter gun tubs that were added back here. These tubs were retained even after the guns were removed. One of them was used to house the refueling uh, container for the ship's drones. They used a specific type of gasoline. So that was stored up here in this on a special cart. And there's a lever you can pull to release that cart into the water. The gasoline is lighter than water. Oil floats on water, so it would float. Uh, so if there's a fire back here, you can drop it off the side and then circle back around and pick it up later on if you needed to. So you'll see some refueling equipment back here with this one. And then we've got our after flagstaff, which uh, is also hinged so it can be lowered. If you're going to do something like fire the guns directly astern, uh, you can take that down. You're only using the American flag back here if the ship is in port, uh, not if she's at sea. If it's at sea, you shift colors to the mast. Uh, also, you'll see the other two chains for our 100-year uh, storm mooring system. Again, this is the system that keeps the ship in place if something happens to our mooring lines and they start to part or somebody messes with them and unties them or whatnot. The ship is not going to move out into the shipping channel in the middle of Delaware or go back and crash into one of the bridges that's around us. So that is uh, a walk 887 foot 7 inches down the full length of Battleship New Jersey, pointing out a couple of the interesting features you can see on the main deck because you guys requested it for some reason. What are some other things you want to see in future videos? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description if you'd like to continue to donate to give us the free time to go around and do this stuff. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.